Here again, we have a case of so-called cargo cults, imitation cults. Pre-Columbian people saw something flying up there, so it had to do with the gods. They made these models, they covered them with gold, and today we found out they really do fly. If this were the only clue suggesting flight in the ancient world, it would be easy to ignore the whole idea as pure fantasy. But elsewhere in South America, there are more intriguing clues about the mystery of ancient flying machines. The small town of Samapata in central Bolivia seems frozen in history, an untouched oasis from a simpler time. Penetrating this remote wilderness requires a long, difficult journey, even with modern transportation. Here, the mountains hide a centuries-old mystery that could relate to the possibility of flight in ancient times. Silent and alone, a strange mountain called El Fuerte juts into the sky. El Fuerte, the Spanish word for fortress. A fortress cut out of the rock by pre-Inca tribes? Perhaps. A sanctuary? Most likely. But if it was a fortress or a sanctuary, why don't we find in all of South America a comparable place? Experts are baffled by El Fuerte. Its design does not suggest to scholars any traditional military or religious function. And although experts estimate that El Fuerte predates the arrival of the Inca people in this region, around 1400, its age is uncertain. The most distinctive feature of El Fuerte is a pair of parallel grooves about 100 feet long, which have been etched into the rock. They run from the bottom of the bare face all the way to the top. Let's look closer at these strange grooves. Obviously, they point to the sky. To me, it looks like a launching ramp with which they catapulted some flying objects towards heaven. Flying objects which they had observed being used by their gods. To achieve flight, all aircraft must travel fast enough during takeoff for the wings to generate lift. Where space for takeoff is limited, such as the deck of an aircraft carrier, a catapult must be used. This steam-powered launcher is so powerful, it can accelerate a 65,000-pound jet to a speed of 150 miles per hour in only 300 feet. On the top of the mountain, a circular structure with rectangular and triangular notches has been carved into the rock. This could have been the installation on which a rope made of rubber was wound around. Rubber was known to pre-Inca tribes long time ago. The tight rope was attached to the flying object below. Then the anchors were knocked away, and the object took off into the sky. Could El Fuerte really be a primitive launching pad? Or is this possibly another example of imitative behavior on the part of ancient people? I believe our ancestors watched the gods descend in carriages which looked like planes. People were awed of these flying machines and worshipped them. This led into a cargo cult, meaning to imitate these flying machines with primitive earthly technology.
For 300 years, from 900 to 1200 AD, Tula was the capital of the Toltec Empire. Located an hour north of what is now Mexico City, this ancient metropolis was the hub of the great Toltec trading network, stretching from the American Southwest to Costa Rica. At its peak, Tula was a densely packed city of perhaps 60,000 people. Do these ancient statues depict great Toltec rulers, famous warriors, or perhaps religious figures? Or are they something entirely different? Scholars interpret these statues as depicting warriors ready for battle. On the chest is a butterfly, a traditional Toltec costume element. Held in their hands is an altal, the unique central Mexican spear. On the shoes are flowers, which symbolize the gentleness of King Topiltzin, who first made Tula the capital of the empire. Now really, strange warriors with butterflies on their chest and flowers on their shoes. In my opinion, the ancestors of the Toltecs had contact with extraterrestrials, which they worshipped as the gods. Centuries later, they tried to imitate these gods because they had only oral history. Many details were lost or not understood at all. Could this object on the chest, which clearly is attached with straps, be a life support system? Or the object in the hand, a powerful weapon? Though researchers dispute this interpretation, the true meaning of the Toltec statues remains a mystery. Could ancient cultures have been influenced by visitors from another world? To some, archaeological findings elsewhere in the region keep this question alive. Tikal, the oldest and largest city ever built by the ancient Mayans. Tikal was first settled in 600 BC and flourished for 1,500 years, creating one of the most scientifically advanced civilizations on Earth at the time. The Mayans were able to develop an original set of timekeeping, of astronomy, of uh, cosmology that is unique and, and fascinating. Dr. Brian Penpraise is a professor of ancient astronomy at Pomona College in California. The Mayan pyramids were built for ritual purposes. Some of them had observatories on the top of them. They had a series of priests that would inhabit the temples and record their observations in writing. But the observations were very simple. The priest would stand on top of a temple and look. These observations, carefully recorded over months and years, became the basis of Mayan astronomy. Without the benefit of telescopes or satellites, the priests began to unlock the mysteries of the heavens. The pyramids became the focus of religious and scientific learning. The pyramid of the double-headed serpent is more than 20 stories high. It was the tallest structure anywhere in the Americas for almost a thousand years. Only the invention of the elevator at the turn of the 20th century allowed buildings to grow taller. The pyramids were based on astronomical alignments, but they were more importantly a point in which the, the people could communicate with gods.